God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I chapter 
chapter 17. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him, and some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with the inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives all of mankind the breath and everything in it. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods, the boundaries, and their dwelling place. And he should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine uh, being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance uh, God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed the day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the gospel.
And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will, not, will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he is it who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
pledge your faith to your Heavenly Father and your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, during Confirmation, especially here at Emmanuel, I think a lot of people kind of reminisce about their Confirmations and uh, how that all took place. I was about 13 years old when that took place, um, and I can remember standing up saying the exact same words that you're going to say, and as I look back on it, I had no idea what I was doing. I believed in Jesus, I loved him, but I had no idea what that meant, that I was going to put my complete trust in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And through the years, I learned something very important. My whole salvation was not based upon my sole faith in Jesus. My salvation depended upon Jesus' faith in me and the faith that he has given to me. At the waters of holy baptism, God made a promise to you and to me that he would never leave you nor forsake you. It is here that we base our whole faith. We heard that in the epistle lesson. Baptism now saves you. Well, I want you to turn to the epistle lesson found on page 5 in your bulletin. And for those who have not completed your sermon summaries, you can do one for me now. You can all laugh, as they did. At least that's what they think, I know. Uh, turn to verse 15 in chapter, 1 Peter chapter 3. These wonderful words. In your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy. Always being prepared to give the, make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. You're going to do that today. You're going to stand up and make that defense. You're going to profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The reason for your hope. But you want to know what? You're going to do that every day of your life. Every day, you're going to make a defense. You're going to say, this is what I believe and why I believe it. Why I believe Jesus and Him crucified, who suffered and died for you and for me, and rose again and lives and reigns throughout all eternity. That is the hope that has been given to you. The hope that was given to you at the waters of holy baptism. I was at some of your baptisms. You were much smaller than me. And you didn't talk back to me either. But in this waters, holy waters of baptism, God gave you that hope. He also gave you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this hope, this reason that we have, we can't do that by ourselves. We can't conjure that up. We need help with that. And Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. In fact, fit to the next page, page 6, in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. This is the upper room. This is Monday, Thursday. In about 12 hours, Jesus is going to be hanging on the cross. In less than 24 hours, he's going to be dead. And he's giving words of comfort, hope, and encouragement to his disciples. And he says to them, I'm going to ask the Father, and he's going to send you another helper. Someone who will be with you forever. I'm going to ask to send the Holy Spirit to you. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us to believe. It's the Holy Spirit that brings us to faith. And the, the means, the ways that he does that is through his word. In fact, turn to the intro of the day, found on page 3. Psalm 119. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word guides us and leads us in where we should be going. God's word leads us shows us the way as a lamp and as a light. I can remember growing up as a kid, going to camp and having to wake up in the middle of the night and having to go to the bathroom. I was so thankful I had a flashlight. Because in the middle of the night, it is pitch black and I can't see anything. I turn that light on and I can see. God's Word does that for you and for me. And He does, the God's Word does it in a very specific way, a very Lutheran way that we read in the Scripture. He guides us and leads us by His law. And now see, He guides us and leads us by, what's that other thing called? Law and gospel. Thank you. All right, let's do that again. We have the law, and everybody, we have the gospel. Everybody, we have the law, and we have the gospel. Thank you. The law. 
what we should be doing or what we shouldn't be doing, the thou shalt and the thou shalt not. The law also points out to us how we fail miserably in keeping the law. In order for you to get into heaven, you have to keep the law perfectly. You can't. Ever. But the gospel, the good news, tells us what God has done for you and for me. The gospel is that Jesus saved you in his suffering and his death on the cross and his rising again. He gives to you his perfect righteousness so that now when God looks at you, he just doesn't see you, he sees Jesus and his perfect righteousness, the perfect keeping of the law. Solely by what Christ has done for you and for me. Now this long gospel, this guiding us and lead us as a lamp and a light, that played itself out in real life for the Apostle Paul. In the book of Acts 17, we read how Paul is in Athens. It's the basket of paganism. Paul goes into Athens on one of his missionary trips, and he's looking around, and he finds the temple with all these gods, these false gods. And as he's looking around, he notices this one known, this god to the, uh, or idol to the unknown god. And he says, you know what? I'm going to tell you about this unknown god. I'm going to tell you who he is. And as we listen to it, Paul goes all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2. He says, this unknown God, he created everything. He created mankind. He created you. He gives you breath. He gives you everything. And he goes on. And then he gets to the law. And he says, you guys need to repent. You need to stop trusting and believing in these false gods. They're all around us. And you need to trust and rely in the true God. Well, today, chances are you're probably not going to enter into a temple and finding all these false gods made of metal and stone and wood. But false gods are everywhere. <laughs> Vying for your attention. Wanting you to follow after them. They're all there. Every one of those gods in the, in, in the book of Acts in Athens, we have them here today with us. Oh, you're the most important person in the world, so take care of yourself. Oh, if you want to pleasure yourself, do it to, the, to whatever the nth degree. Because, you know what? You're the most important. Oh, don't for, just forget what God says. He just wants you not to have fun anymore. Those gods are here today. And today, you're going to stand up and say, you know what? I'm not going to follow those gods. I am going to follow the true God. I'm going to follow Jesus. And Paul did that. He talked about repentance, about turning a 180 and following after the Lord. That's what repentance is all about, where Jesus calls us to follow him. Because Paul says, there's going to be a righteous judge who will come. There will be a judgment that will happen. And that righteous judge is Jesus. The one who died, who God rose from the dead. That's why when we say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. It's more than just Easter. It's more than just the resurrection on Easter morning. When we say that Jesus suffered and he died and he rose again from the grave, we are also saying that he ascended into heaven and he will come again on the last day. That he will come as our righteous judge and give to those who believe and trust in him eternal life in him in heaven. And it all started here. The waters of holy baptism for each and every one of you. God made you his very own. Micah, I didn't cry yet. I'm working on it. That's why I'm going to finish this up pretty quick here. Because I didn't cry at your baptism either, so I don't know what that is. Whatever. This is so cool when you're going to do that. Yes. You're going to have to make this confession every day. As St. Paul says... And as we all do, we are always ready 
to give the reason for the hope that you have. In a little bit, you're going to come up and receive the Lord's Supper for the very first time. You're going to receive the forgiveness of all your sins. And in this receiving the Lord's Supper, not only are you going to receive the forgiveness of sins, but Jesus is going to do something that totally just blows all our mind. He's going to break social distancing rules all over the place. Because what is Jesus going to give to you in the sacrament? What did Pastor Stucker say? When you eat and drink the very body and blood of Christ in the sacrament, what is Jesus giving to you? A kiss. A kiss to remind you that he loves you. So every time you come up for the Lord's Supper, you receive the very forgiveness of all your sins, and Jesus gives you a kiss and reminds you that he loves you. Don't ever forget that. That Jesus loves you the very end. One last thing for you parents. Your job is not done. You still need to model the faith. You still need to make sure that these young people get to church. Because they're not driving yet. Are you all nodding your head with me? Yes. This is so important that you can see that they have not graduated from church. This is just the next step in their journey. The next step in their journey. I pray for you. That you continue to model the faith. That you continue to do the reason for the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. So that they can tell the next generation. And the next generation. And the next generation. That's the good news that we have. I love you all. I pray for you all. And I will continue to pray for all of you. That you are always ready to give the reason for the hope that is in you. That's pretty cool. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the Word of God, and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring a completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shelby Ann Anderson. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, verse 7. Ellie Marie Benjamin. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Psalm 25, verse 5. Hunter Bonner Bennett. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, verse 19. Emily Christine Castings. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Israel, 
Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, verse 1. Adriana Sue Gurman. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Proverbs 28, verse 1. Tristan Craig Gravis. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. Hayden Allen Cook Harper. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or in the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks in the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7. Jenna Marie Mann. O Lord God, please remember me, and please strengthen me. Judges 16, verse 28. Elizabeth Elaine Parker. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Blake Michael Reed. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. Taylor Rose Schmeler. We love because he first loved us. 1 John 4, verse 19. Nora Marie Whirling. Oh my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. Psalm 25, verses 2 and 3. Micah Paul Zexer. He has told you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, verse 8. Now may the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. We invite the congregation to rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these your sons and daughters to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, cleansing them by his blood. 
Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that clings ever to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in Him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life and morning. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. At the end of each petition, I will say, let us pray to the Lord, and the congregation responds, Lord, have mercy. For the faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth, let us pray to the Lord, Lord for the church of God here and everywhere, that all who confess Jesus Christ may be united in doctrine and witness, defended against all the assaults of the enemy, and eager to gather around your word and sacrament in love for one another, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for this parish, for the work of the kingdom in our community, and for the resources to accomplish all that God desires, that his name may be glorified among us, and his purpose fulfilled in our words and works, let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. for those agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all of their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church, that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick and those who suffer, especially Rose Sweet, Nancy Losher, Karen Filling, Paul Meyer, Les Painter, Paul Nickel, Ralph Selmeyer, and Carol Olive, that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For love of godly things, that we may delight in God's word and walk in his ways, and for the spirit, that we may be led into all truth and kept from error and false doctrine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those celebrating birthdays, especially Erna Voltemeyer, as she celebrates her 100th birthday, that God would grant to her a blessed birthday. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our confirmations, that God would keep them in his grace all the days of their lives, and they would always be ready to give the reason for the hope they have in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good, so that justice may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord our God, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray you to strengthen our faith and to make our hearts whole that we need not fear, but address our prayers to you in all humility. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great high priest, who even now
before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his own blood, until that day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life, and stand before you in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Please rise. And now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Depart in peace.